welcome to another playlist where we talk about how we can work and understand spring boot and j unit in this playlist we'll talk about how we can use j unit and write unit tests for our spring boot rest api application we will do this uh, by learning how j unit works uh, what unit tests are why do we actually need to write unit tests and what does testing even mean so we will start with the basics of what testing is in this video and slowly uh, move ahead with basic uh, unit tests and then we will actually build our rest api and then write unit tests for our rest api in this playlist you can expect learning about tdd which is trust driven development where uh, we understand what that paradigm is uh, why that is uh, pretty famous in the current uh, uh, software engineering uh, scenario and what do we actually mean when we say tdd or test driven development so let's uh, before all of that let's just understand what uh, testing is and uh, what do we actually you know mean by testing a software system so testing the system is an important phase in a software development life cycle uh, the sdlc uh, testing promotes um, code reliability uh, robustness and ensures high quality software delivered to clients if implemented correctly so testing has been given more importance uh, since tdd uh, has become a prominent process in developing software now test driven development uh, entails converting requirements into test cases and using these test cases to gate keep code quality now code will be considered unacceptable if it fails any of the test cases declared in a system and the more test cases uh, we cover uh, the better the product becomes the code base is lengthened considerably but it reinforces the fact that the system meets the given requirements now rest apis are uh, rigorously tested during integration testing uh, however a good developer should test rest uh, endpoints even before integration in the unit tests now we have these two terms called as you know um, rest uh, integration testing unit testing so let's understand what all of them mean so before that let's talk about the purpose of software tests so a software test is a piece of software which executes another piece of software asserting that it is behaving in a way that we want to with software tests uh, we ensure that certain parts of our software work as expected these tests are typically executed via the build system and therefore help developers avoid breaking existing code during development activities running tests automatically helps to identify software regressions introduced by changes in the source code having a high test coverage of your code uh, basically test uh, um, testing all possible uh, edge cases in your code allows you to continue developing features without having to perform lots of manual tests now you should write software tests for the critical and complex parts of your application if you introduce new features uh, a solid test suite also protects you against regression in existing code now some developers believe that uh, every statement in your code should be tested but uh, in general it is safe to ignore trivial code so if you have a simple if else statement or a for loop statement which you uh, are confident about what it does then you don't have to write a test or test whether it's working or not right because you already know how uh, it works behind the scenes so for example it is typically useless to write tests for getter and setter methods uh, which simply assign values to fields uh, writing tests for these statements is time consuming and uh, actually pointless uh, as you would be test as you would be testing the jvm now the jvm already has test cases for this so if you are developing something uh, in java it is safe to assume that you know a field assignment and all of that works properly so now let's talk about some testing terminology the code which is tested is typically called the code under test if you are testing an application then it is called application under test a test fixture is a fixed state of a set of objects which are used as a baseline for running tests another way to describe this is called as a test precondition now i'm not showing all of this uh, in the video because uh, i'll be putting the links in the description and they have a much comprehensive view understanding these definitions but before we actually you know jump ahead with uh, the practical uh, coding part we need to understand what these are and talk about them a little right so uh, check out the description for the links where you can understand them in depth uh, depth the theoretical part and this video uh, is here to make you understand how we implement everything 
So now let's talk about the different uh, terminologies: unit testing, integration testing, performance testing. So now, a unit test is a piece of code written by a developer that executes a specific functionality in the code to be tested and asserts a certain behavior or state. The percentage of code which is tested by unit test is typically called test coverage. Again, the percentage of code which is tested by unit tests is typically called code coverage. A unit test targets a small unit of code, uh, let's say a method or a class. Uh, external dependency should be removed from unit tests. So if your particular function is dependent on some external class or you know, taking something from external uh, libraries or modules, then you can ignore them and only test what that particular function does. Now, how do we do this? We do this with the depend. Uh, we do this. Uh, we do. We do the replacement of external dependencies uh, with a test implementation or a mock object created by the test framework. So JUnit uh, provides and other uh, uh, libraries provide us with uh, a way to mock those external dependencies. So now. If you want to text, uh, test the complex user interfaces or how two different software components are interacting with each other, for this, you need to develop an integration test which checks the integration of these components. Now, an integration test aims to test the behavior of a component or the integration between a set of components. The term functional test is sometimes used as a synonym for integration test. So you want to test the functionality between two components. Now, integration tests check that the whole system works as intended therefore they are reducing the need for intensive manual tests so uh, if i want to test an api or uh, check whether an api is joined to another api uh, i can uh, run both the apis in a testing environment and then manually uh, not do a post request and check whether uh, something happened or not or i could do an integration test it automatically does this for me uh, saving me time and you know it's easy it's more work for the system and less for the human now the last thing which uh, we talk about is performance tests. So performance tests are used to benchmark software components repeatedly. The purpose is to ensure uh, that the code under test runs fast enough even if it's under high load. Now in this playlist, we will strictly be focusing on unit tests, which is something a developer needs to write uh, to make sure that the code which they write is working properly before they send it to production. And a unit test is, so, is something which I feel is very important for, a, for a, a, a new software engineer who has just graduated from college or even for an intern who's working at a big corporation. Unit tests ensure that your code is correct and it is covering all possible test cases. So this particular playlist will be about developing a REST application and writing unit tests for those uh, APIs which we develop. So there are two ways of doing this. One is to first implement a REST API and then write unit tests. The second is the TDD approach, where we first write our tests and then we uh, use those tests to build our REST application. And in this playlist, we will be seeing both of those ap approaches uh, as we go. Now, before we jump on to uh, you know, creating our project, let's just talk about what is you know, behavior versus state testing. Now, a test is a behavior test if it checks if certain methods were called with correct input parameters. A behavior test does not validate the result of a method call. So it only checks if uh, the input parameters were correct or not. State testing is all about validating the result. And behavior testing is about testing the behavior of application under test. Now, if you're testing algorithms or system functionality, in most cases, you want to uh, test the state and not the interactions. A typical test setup uses mocks uh, to abstract the interactions so that other classes you know, are not dependent on this. And after that, you test the state or the behavior as you need. So this is uh, some simple uh, theoretical information that we need to know about why we do testing, uh, the reason for why uh, we need to understand what are the different terminologies, etc., etc. Now, for this tutorial, uh, we are going to create a project, uh, a Spring Boot Maven project, and then we are, we are going to install some dependencies and make sure that our project is you know uh, up and running for further you know implementations so let's go ahead and create a new project uh, this is what you get when you create a new project go to next uh, let's give it a name let's give it um, j unit rest api application and let's click finish now this will uh, give us our application so 
let's wait for a minute for it to be fully loaded. Now, we, now the best part about uh, writing tests uh, using IntelliJ is the, and using a main project is that we automatically have a testing folder where we you know, put in all of our tests. So now that we have our uh, repository ready, let's go into SRC, go to main. Here we have Java and resources. But if you see in the SRC, we have test as well. And inside test, we just have a Java folder. So nothing in it right now, but all of our tests will be inside the Java folder. And it will be inside the test uh, folder, which is uh, which encapsulates the Java folder. So before we jump into all of that, uh, let's first uh, include all the dependencies that we need for this project so that you know we are uh, good to go. So the first thing that we need is our parent. So the parent is going to be having a group ID, which is going to be org dot spring framework dot Framework dot boot, and we have the artifact ID as well. Spring Boot Startup Parent, and the version is going to be two point two. Oops, not here. Two point two point two release. So this will basically uh, have all the uh, typical things that we need for our you know Spring Boot API. And get started. The next thing that we need are dependencies. So we need a bunch of dependencies, and we'll talk about uh, what all of them are. So dependencies, and now let's uh, add in our dependencies. Before that, let's just add in our build plugin so that you know we want Maven to get. Uh, we want Maven to fetch all of our dependencies. So let's quickly add that here. So. This basically uh, tells Maven to get our, our dependencies from the Maven repository and you know uh, put them inside our um, local dependencies, Maven dependencies folder. Okay, now what do we need? So first we need some starter uh, repositories. So let's quickly get them inside here. So we need Spring Boot Starter Web because it is going to be a REST application. The next thing is Spring Boot Starter Test. Uh, it has simple uh, things that we need for our testing environment. Next, we need uh, Lombok. So this is basically a very handy um, dependency which will help us with a lot of annotations and help us with everything which we need for that. And we need a couple of more. So let's quickly add them and then talk about them. So first is Apache Derby. So we, uh, since uh, the main uh, intention of this playlist is going to be testing our code, we want to minimize our dependency on external databases. So Apache Derby is an in-memory uh, in database which uh, will be up and running just as we, you know, uh, give the dependency. And uh, that's all we need to run an in-memory database. Uh, just add the uh, add this dependency and we are good to go. And the next thing which we need is Spring Boot Starter Data GPA uh, to have our tables uh, ready and Mockito uh, is something which I want to save up for the upcoming videos because it is uh, this will require a video of its own. So now that we have all of our dependencies and everything ready, uh, let's quickly uh, have our uh, you know, API runner. So let's go inside SRC, main, Java. Uh, let's have a package. So let's say com.rest.application. And inside this, we can do uh, REST API runner. And this will be a uh, pretty straightforward and you know, boilerplate code. So before we do that, let's quickly refresh our Maven dependencies and you know uh, add all the dependencies to our project. Should take a minute or so, and I think we're good to go. Now we need to do another eight. Boot application and we need to have a main method so public static void main string args 
and here we need to run or start our string application dot run and the class which we're running is the rest api runner dot class and we pass in the args we get from the method okay so now we have our simple uh, project ready and let's run it to make sure that it's running properly takes about some seconds to build up all the clusters and everything else uh, yep should be up hopefully no errors because uh, we have been doing this for quite a long time uh, yep everything looks good if you see the data source you will see hikari and everything else because we're using apache derby so we already have our GPA and everything else you know, installed and we literally have a database up and running with our uh, Tomcat server. So yeah, uh, we have um, everything up and running uh, to start implementing our unit tests. And uh, that is all for this video. Uh, in the next video, we will uh, go through some basic JUnit examples and then quickly uh, move on to building unit tests for our REST API application. So uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.